All right, what's up, heavy hitters? So today, we got a new topic. Um, it's actually a topic that's been asked so many times that we decided to finally do a how-to, and that's injury prevention on your shoulders, chest, elbows, basically all upper body movement, um, specifically for the bench press, right? And um, this is something that, you know, you can use to prevent injury and also to recover, rehabilitate an injury. And um, I'm not a professional in this, but my man Topo is, so uh, take it from here. Yeah, so um, just come throughout school, training my NFL athletes for the NFL. Um, we always said to get a, if you have, if you have a car, you always get an oil change before it breaks down. Um, so preventative injury uh, workouts is huge uh, when you get to a high level of being an athlete or doing anything at a high level. So um, this is one of the workouts I've actually gotten from a conjugate and my mentor, who's the strength coach for the New York Giants. This is a conjugate style exercise. They use a lot of bands, chains, uh, that type of dynamic and, and max effort work. But we're actually creating a ton of instability from this. And through that process, we're actually gonna engage the tendons, the rotator cuff, the chest muscles at a higher rate so that we can actually pump more blood through those, those body parts. Um, one thing I use with this to my athletes is that it shows you the perfect bar path where you're supposed to be at just because that instability is swinging you back and forth that it forces you to be stable and it forces you to create power through stability. Um, but it's also a great tool too, so if you don't, if you have shoulder problems, rotator, rotator cuff problems, elbow problems, bicep, I use this one for my bicep tendonitis. So two or three years ago, I couldn't touch 135 without it just flaring up, and then if you've had tendonitis, you know that no matter what, no matter how hard, how hard you try, it just gives out on you. Um, this could be one of those preventative exercises that shows, that gives you that blood flow through the bicep, the elbow, the forearm, so you can activate at a higher rate so we can avoid the tendonitis, the torn, pe the torn pecs, torn rotator cuffs, um, stuff like that. So you don't need much weight, you don't need much for it, but we have a freaking broomstick right here. Uh, usually people use something called a bamboo bar. Um, you can get it from like Rogue or any type of powerlifting company, um, but we, we don't do it as often, so I just grab a broomstick and then some, some kettlebells, you can use plates, you can use bands, anything, whatever you have that you can create instability with, and then, so it's a simple exercise. Um, I have a lot of athletes that literally are on ships, like uh, Navy ships, uh, on sea, so that they have to use the broomsticks that they, they use to clean the bathroom. So they unscrew those and they use those. Um, so we'll kind of go over how to set this up and then how to execute it properly. So first thing is just the setup of the actual movement. Um, I just got two basic bands. Um, they're about, like the regular bands, like maybe three feet long, um, double looped. So you just double loop these guys. So I'll just show you right here. So this is a 20 pound kettlebell. You can use up to however many kettlebells you want to, but having that regular band, double looping it, and then pulling it through the actual kettlebell, bringing it up, making sure that everything's even on the, on the other side too, and with the distribution of it too. Um, so this is a little thicker band right here. Both of these are two 20 pound kettlebells. 20 pound kettlebells, red band, yellow band, make sure all the bands are the same because they both, they flex differently. So you see this, that's gonna cause instability and that one doesn't move as much because it's a thicker band. So the, the, the skinnier bands that you use will cause more instability because of the movement of the kettlebell. It's called horizontal displacement. So um, you see that this, <laughs> we're not gonna be able to fit much on here because it, the broomstick is already bending. So we're just gonna keep it at, this is a total of 80 pounds. Um, but if you have a real bamboo bar, um, made from Rogue, you could fit up to like 450, uh, 450 to 500 pounds on that thing. So you could put huge kettlebells on there, like 80 pound kettlebells, and it won't snap. Uh, I don't want this thing to snap today because we use this broomstick for a lot of things. So um, we're to go through that. So w when you're doing this, you want to keep the reps high. Um, that will activate at the highest rate and then cause you fatigue. And then you get to really see um, where your imbalances are. So uh, your, your primary movers will always take the brunt force of everything, but then you'll start feeling your stabilizers fatigue fastly uh, at a fast rate because of stabilizing that powerful movement with your chest. Um, and that's how you kind of figure out what your actually your weaknesses and your strengths are. So we're gonna go to a set of 20. Um, he, he's never done this before, but we just did it before we did the video. So, but he has a ton of stability because that's how he bench presses. So be, but be careful because I've seen people smack their face with it because of how much instability there is. And so ha make sure you have a spotter, no, no matter how light it feels to you, always have a spotter on this because it might hit you in your face. All right, so we'll go through a set with it.
passiert. As the, as the bar path, because it will never be perfect, and especially since it's the first time, he won't have that exact bar path, but you can see how it's swaying like this. Some reps look easier than others just because you could find that, that stability, right? Did yeah. it burn a little bit? No, yeah, the triceps. Triceps? Yeah. So like that's, I was always a good key when I look at my athletes, because then I want to ask them, um, I can determine what their weight, their strength and their weaknesses are or how they stabilize because of what they feel fatigue first. So some, some people will say, my shoulder, my shoulder is hurting the whole time, my chest was hurting the whole time, my triceps. So we might have to look at him like overloading his triceps too much in his pressing for stabilization. So that's a wasted amount of energy. Um, obviously he has a, a huge bench press, but now this kind of gets us a key to see exactly how he engages, what does he engage throughout the movement, and then how can we get better at switching up his mind process to maybe distribute the weight a little bit better, um, stability wise, making it more consistent because everybody knows that once you become a master of a movement, that's when you excel. Um, before that point, it's kind of just like muscle memory, you're trying to get muscle memory and then you're trying to get the muscle to activate or kind of create a stimulus for the muscle group. So Big Boy did a regular grip um, variation for the earthquake bench. I'm gonna do a closer grip um, just to show a little variation and then halfway between the set, I'm gonna pause it uh, about three inches off my chest, almost like a spoto, but I'm gonna pause it right there and then show the, the isometric contraction so that you, you get the three of best of both worlds with the contraction. So you get your iso, which is the actual hold and the, the no movement of an actual rep. Um, so I'm actually holding it in place. You get your eccentric, so that's the downward phase, so that, that negative phase, and your concentric, which is the, the shortening of the muscle group, which is the actual pressing phase. So the eccentric coming down, the isometric holding, and then the pressing. So I'll go through that. So here I'll do the ISO. and then finish the rest of the reps. All right, so the, the different variation, um, so if I'm doing a little bit wider, how big boy is with his regular grip, you're gonna get a little more chest activation, a little bit shoulder. When I do it this way, I'm getting a little bit more tricep and a little bit more lat. I always wanna work on that because the hardest thing to do in your bench press is how to engage my lats. So if I have that instability now, it's forcing me to engage my lats. So I have to learn how to pull the bar down, how to squeeze the bar down and not let it just drop and just bang weights out. So if you can see those two variations, if you could add it to your regimen, it will increase your, your blood flow, your activation, how to squeeze the bar because if you ever do this and you don't squeeze the bar, you're gonna bust your teeth open. You can actually switch this variation and go seated shoulder press. So I have some of my athletes do that too. That has like the elbow problems, rotator cuff problems, that I'll actually teach you how to stabilize the shoulder back into the lat. Okay, so if you have uh, any questions about this type of stuff, you can look at any type of conjugate. Um, drop like comments in the, the bottom so that you can see so we can see them and then re respond to them. So I'm fucking out of breath right now. <laughs> so you can drop the comments in the, uh, the bottom so we can see them, respond to them. But this is kind of more of just a physical therapy type thing. Um, I used it when I was coming out and I actually tore my rotator cuff um, just from playing football. So whatever sport you're in, you never want to neglect this aspect of your training. Like I said, it's like getting a, an oil change before you actually have to and so your car doesn't break down. You don't want to wait till your injury comes for you to actually take the, the active response of trying to prevent that, right? So this is injury prevention work. Uh, you do four press, floor press with this, regular bench press, shoulder press, standing shoulder press, which is my favorite because it creates the, the most instability. Um, but if you, like I said, if you just add this to your regimen, you'll see an increased amount of activation blood flow, injury prevention for your elbows, forearms, shoulders, chest, and shoulders.
What's up, heavy hitters? So, this was my first attempt at doing this uh, earthquake, earthquake bench. Earthquake bench, and uh, man, it was pretty tough. And I guess the, the weak point of my bench, which I kind of knew, it's been my lockout, is my tries. That's the first thing that got um, that got sore or a little bit fatigued. My chest was okay, my shoulders, my elbows, things like that. But uh, I definitely felt my tries uh, getting a little tired. So. That indicates that, that I need to get some stronger triceps and do some more tricep work. And vice versa, like my chest got tired and that my triceps didn't. Um, so like we haven't programmed a lot of like extensions, like heavy like barbell extensions because he tore his tricep a while back. So we've kind of been like, you know, laying off that because we don't want to cause an injury. But like, like I say, everybody has a different like weakness or imbalance. So he has a different imbalance than I do. And from anybody who's watching, you'll have a different than whatever we have, you know what I'm saying? Yup, so. Uh... Definitely try this out, find out what your weakness is, or just, um, you know, learn to prevent injury or rehabilitate an old injury that you guys may uh, be having. Like I said, uh, I get tons of questions and, and um, comments and DMs that ask, hey, like, what do you do to keep, you know, your shoulders healthy? How do you bench so much and keep your shoulders healthy? Things like that, and um, here it is, man. Um, a great exercise, uh, very simple. Just use a broom sip, a couple of, uh, uh, a couple bands and some kettlebells, man. You could even use regular uh, weights, I'm sure, huh? Yeah, so you don't even need kettlebells. Yeah, so if you don't have kettlebells, um, you'll, you'll need bands. But even if you don't have a bar, like I know because some people are at 24 LA, whatever, and they don't let you bring stuff in there, you could use a regular barbell. Um, use a regular barbell, but you can add more weight to that because there's gonna be any flex on that bar. Uh, just add more weight, add more bands, um, and then you'll create instability that way. Um, that's It's better than nothing. Um, but if, obviously, if you can use a smaller bar, that's thinner, that will flex a little bit. Um, so we wanna make as much instability as possible. So it causes you to engage at the highest rate. Oh yeah, cool man. Definitely a solid tip that I'm gonna be using in my training, especially in my training to uh, 600 pound uh, comp bench. Um, and if you guys are interested in getting a training program, whether it be preparing for a competition or just looking to get some size and strength or you know, just improve your weightlifting skills. Um, you know, Popo and I, we have the Dev Game program, which is a competition program, and we have the Heavy Hitter program, which is, uh, you know, basically from the beginner to advanced people uh, can purchase this program and, and learn how to become a better uh, power lifter or just a better lifter in the gym. And at the beginning of, uh, so like we always talk about the one through four phase of the Heavy Hitter, um, these type of exercises are more on the advanced end, so they start incorporating throughout the year. So um, it won't be from the beginning because everybody has a, to create a baseline of strength and movement. But then once that movement has started to become muscle memory, then that's when we we, we start to add the, the more advanced lifter things that can help your shoulders, blah, blah, blah. Um, learning the proper movement is injury prevention in itself. Once you get that down with the volume and the intensities, then we start adding other, other key tools like this. But this is for from the beginner to advanced guys, uh, you can cater it to however, like, however well you are in terms of how athletic or um, level of athlete you are, but there, there's a, a portion of this for everybody. Everybody can get better from this. Oh yeah, cool. Um, you know, and also comment below what else you'd like, you'd like to learn, whether it's um, a certain movement, some kind of prevention of injury, or, or how to rehabilitate an old injury, Maybe there's stuff about uh, you have a knee injury, things like that, or you just want to learn another movement in the gym to get stronger or bigger, whatever the case may be, you know, put your comment. There, there's no uh, wrong question to ask, so um, drop the comment below. Let us know what you guys want to see from Dopo and I, and um, just appreciate you guys supporting, baby. Uh, appreciate the love, heavy hitters. Keep banging.